On 16 December, the Pakistani army surrendered to Indian army. And by the time we secured Dhaka airport. On 17 December, number of helicopters with the VIPs were landing and I was given the task to be sure that the security of them is maintained. That time, one rep of Bangladesh, Mukti Wahani, he came and told my commanding officer, Lieutenant Colonel V. N. Channa, that the family of Ben Bandhu is housewife and Pakistani soldier might kill her before they vacate that house. My commanding officer called me and told me to look into the matter. Nobody at that time realized the sensitivity of the operation or the action. However, I took two men with me and with the Mukti Mani rap, I moved towards their house, which was in Dhanmandi. When I was about 100 yards short of the house, there was a big crowd. They stopped us and told us not to go ahead because the Pakistani soldier who was at that particular house they opened fire and might kill you. And during that time, they also shown me a car, with a bullet litten car, with a dead body. And they told me that one reporter wanted to go and they opened fire and killed him. However, I had a task to do. Immediately, I gave my weapon to two Juans and told them to stay there I moved toward that bullet return car. When I reached there, I shouted, Koi hai. In that time, nobody responded. Somehow, slowly, steadily, I started moving towards the house. When I was just 10 yards away, and again I shouted, that they warned me that if I the take step ahead, they would fire and kill me. I knew that their conversation has started. So now the game of guts has started. To ensure that, to keep psychology, my upper hand on them, because that's the only way as I was without arm. I moved towards the house at the gate. They again warned me with a loaded weapon. And that time I started talking and told them that the Pak army has surrendered. They say they don't believe it. I said, you never seen so many Bangladeshis or locals on the roof, on the street. And also an army officer in uniform from India is in front of you. It is indication that the army has surrendered and I'm able to reach to you to remind you that if you don't surrender, your families who are waiting in Pakistan, you will never able to meet them. And if I, you kill me, the Lag Mukti one will come and they will not leave any of you. How they asked me to give some time so they can talk to their officer. I knew that any gap in conversation can change the mind. I told them, your officers already surrendered. 
and none of you will be able to contact you. In between the house, there were noise. Bangabandhu's family, Mrs. Mujir Rahman, present Prime Minister Hasina, and the daughter, other sister Rihanna, and two more relatives were in the house and were calling me that not to give any chance to them, otherwise they would kill them. Because the previous night they tried to eliminate them, but due to some reason, they did not do the same thing. I again told them, if they surrender to me, otherwise their life is in danger. During that time, a sentry who was at the gate, his rifle with the bayonet was touching my body. He was just 18 years old. While I'm talking to the commander at the roof, who was in bunker, I quietly and slowly, steadily pushed the rifle to one side, because I knew that if I try to pull the rifle, and it can be misunderstood, and the thing will be over. The chap was shivering, because I don't think so he has ever seen an officer Indian Army officer in front of him. But when I was talking to them, the commander, fortunately, one Indian helicopter roamed over the house. Then I told them, look at that helicopter. It's an Indian helicopter. And it certainly proved that Indian Army has landed in Bangladesh and, the, and your army has surrendered and nobody will be available to you. They thought for it. They say, give us some time before you send her. I defused it. I said, no. This is the last chance you got it. Otherwise, you will never able to go back to Pakistan. And I, as an army officer, I give them promise that if you send her, I will take you and ensure that you reach safely at that particular place. However, the good sense prevailed. And after a few more talks, they were ready to surrender. And they left. I told them to leave the weapon there untouched and came down. They came. There were about nine chaps. I called the vehicle in which I came with the two Johans to, uh, to take them to the place or headquarter where they want to go. I ensured their safety. Then I opened the door of the house and met first the Mrs. Mujir Rahman. And immediately she embraced me and said that God has sent me a son who saved me. And then other people were also there. During that time, when our thing was going on, somebody indicated a Pakistani flag on their house. I immediately went on the roof, removed the Pakistani flag, and put the Bangladesh flag on that roof. And I threw that Pakistani flag on the ground. And I was told that Mrs. Mujir Rahman put her foot on the flag and said, Joy Bangla. That was the century of the whole election. And as I recall, this was a battle of guts and wits. Now, after 41 years, the Bangladesh Army and the government, they recognized the services. And just two, three months back, the government of Bangladesh awarded me the Friend of Bangladesh Liberation War honor. You see, on 3rd December 1971, from Agartala side, my battalion moved inside the Bangladesh, the then the East Pakistan, behind the defenses and there is stronghold of Ganga Sagar Railway Station. It has very important strategic as well as tactical importance. When we went inside, 
we found that that particular station is full of mine. However, during our recce, we found that the railway line on which they were moving that one of the goods train compartment, as they were carrying some items in that, it is not mined. Therefore, we plan an attack in single file along the rail line, which is most unconventional or unique, which never taught anywhere so far I know. And I'm sure nobody advised it also in future. However, when we moved along the railway line at 3 o'clock with the big fog, the, observ the observation was just hardly a meter or more than that. We moved quietly. When we reached at the bunker, the Pakistani soldier realized that something is there. So man inside the bunker, he shouted, Kohl hai. The Subedar Hushar Singh was with me. In his own Haryani language, he used the word Aapka Bap. Then they realized something really gone wrong. They opened fire. The bullet hit Subedar Hushar Singh at his lug and fell down. Well, I immediately pulled the LMG, which was in the bunker, so that they can't fire further. And one of the sentry out of the bunker came out. And before he could fire, I fired and killed him. And his dead body, we are so close to each other that his dead body fell on me. And one hand was like this, and one hand my stain. Now, before I could remove the other Pakistani chap who was inside, he also came with a weapon. And before I could realize, it took a fraction second to know that which is Pakistani, which is Indian, I immediately fired at him and killed him also. And after that, we carried on the attack. And it was hand-to-hand -hand fight, went for an hour and so. And later on, to clear the town also, we have to go. In this attack, I got the Veer Chakra for my action. And the battalion guard, the, the other company, also from Veer Chakra, other company in their own action, that is there. And this capturing of this feature has opened the, the passage for the Indian Army to go through, as well as they cut off the the Kamila road and other the strategic roads by capturing an enemy did not go toward the Akhoda, the main railway station where they have to capture. So this was the success of battle and this has been taught in the Indian Army as well as somewhere in institutes how this thing happened.